Good morning, Kiki. Hi, Hi guys. how are you? Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, where are we? We are at the Planetarium in Providence, Rhode Island. It's one of my favorite places because I am an animal lover and a nature lover. And in general, I love adventures. And so this is my way of getting a micro adventure here in Providence. Amazing. Awesome. Well, feel free to explore and show us around. We're here okay. to get to know you and now all these animals. So what's inspiring in your life right now? Um, what's inspiring me? Getting a couple weeks off. I'm going to go to Cabo San Lucas in Baja. It's one of my favorite places to go rest. And then I'm going to go to Guyana to go see some nature. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Why go there when you can see all the nature here? Yeah, it's not quite the same. No. The birds don't move. <laughs> <No. laughs> I agree. So what's one thing people don't know about you? Um, I don't know. Um, I am a dual citizen to the U.S. and Kenya. Yeah, my husband is a German and American citizen. That's just cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about your wake up ritual. Uh, my wake up ritual. Um, I usually grab a glass of ice water with lemon. I go for a walk or do some cardio or Pilates or yoga, whatever type of movement is resonating with me that day. And then I take a shower and give myself a facial and groom my cat, That's <laughs> who cool. also likes to get little micro facials. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about your favorite time of day? Um, my favorite time of day, I'm a morning person. Mm -hmm. I wake up at 5.30 every day. It's, I wake up as soon as the sun is out, and I can get tricked when the sun doesn't come yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> in the winter, do you get up later? I do get up later. Okay. And so living in Providence is a little harder because in Northern California, you get the same sun all the mm -hmm. time. But here, the sun has its moods, and so... That can affect my mood. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you mentioned some places you were going to visit. What's your dream country to visit? Um, a country that I haven't visited that I really want to visit is um, Ecuador. I want to go to the Galapagos. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that is something that I have planned to do before COVID. And then COVID happened and then I couldn't do it. So that's next on my list. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest surprise you've ever had? Mm. Biggest surprise. I don't know. I don't really like surprises. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> I try to premeditate just about everything. <laughs> Everything's in the Google. Yeah, calendar. exactly. <laughs> How about heels or flats or like sneakers? Um, flip flops. Flip flops. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Vintage or new when it comes to clothes or anything. I actually don't have a preference. I just pick things based on their comfort. Mm -hmm. Would you say you have a style icon? Uh, yes. I would definitely say I love Gwyneth Paltrow mm -hmm. and I love Solange. That's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to, if you could pick who would write your obituary, would you pick Gwyneth Paltrow? Perhaps, or somebody else. <clears throat> mm. My obituary? I know it's a big question. So. That is very, very dark. Um, it would definitely be Janelle Monet. Because I would definitely want to be like shot into space or something. It's a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> <Four chances. laughs> um, what are three things you can't live without? Um, hmm. Peanut butter cups, dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. Um, dark chocolate peanut butter cups. Mm -hmm. like the mm -hmm. thing that goes together. Mm -hmm. um, a really good cup of hibiscus tea, and my husband. Aww. Aww. Just because uh, he's probably gonna. <laughs> 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 What's the one ingredient you put in everything? Mm, probably curry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And if you could make dinner for three people living or dead, what would it be? Um, it'd probably be samosas, 
it's easy, all in one. Yeah. And people usually can eat that and leave you alone and feel happy. <laughs> Would you say you have a biggest fear in life? Um, yeah, it's not doing what I want to do. Yeah. I'm a free bird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like being caged in any way. Yeah. <laughs> no boxes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of being caged, how about your own? Do you have a preference, window or aisle seat? Window. Window. What's your current TV obsession? Uh, mm, hmm. I would say um, Only Murders in the Building. Good show. It was so good. Mm -hmm. And I love Selena. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm Hulu if you want to watch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, Tuesdays at 10. Give <laughs> <laughs> me my promo and I'll be down. <laughs> Do you have a favorite app? A favorite app? App. Mm, app. I don't think tech been long enough that I try to be technology independent. So I don't like, I'm a paper person. And I try to really not allow myself to get entrained by these things. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Did you say you have a secret talent? Secret talent? Well, I am really good with animals. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, wild yeah. ones, too. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. like, like, me and my husband travel. I've been known to like get monkeys to sit on my lap <laughs> and, you know, pet like wild animals. And it's something I'm really good at. Wow. Mm -hmm. What's the most adventurous thing you've ever done in your life? And I've heard of a couple just now on the drive. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one of my biggest accomplishments is um, all the diving I've done. Mm -hmm. I love to dive, and I just feel really in harmony when I'm surrounded by fish. Did you consider yourself a fish? Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely a mermaid of sorts. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, how would you define yourself in three words? You can use mermaid as a word. I would say curious, mm -hmm. um, adaptive, and innovative. Do you have a favorite piece of clothing? Well, I love these pants. Mm -hmm. These are baby alpaca. And they're so fuzzy and they're so good. Um, but I think my favorite clothing would always be um, something cultural. So we have something called a leso, which is very similar to like a hijab or um, the Hawaiians wear the, uh, mm -hmm. what is that? The lei. Yes. Yeah. It's a wrap. Mm -hmm. And I always have one at home and use it to lounge around. <laughs> What's a must-have piece of clothing? Everyone should have. Definitely a less so any type of wrap. Like yes. every culture has one. Mm -hmm. And so it is a ubiquitous experience to lounge at home in your wrap. It's like a kilt. Yeah, it is like a kilt. Yes. Everybody has one. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. It's like dumplings. Like every culture has a, a dumpling. dumpling. Exactly. Yeah. That's so interesting. Know. Exactly. Um, what superpower would you want? Ooh. Um, telekinesis. Yes. With animals as well, or just humans? Yes, okay. with animals yeah. as well. I feel like they would actually tell us much more in-depth information. <laughs> Especially dolphins. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Speaking of which, dolphins or turtles? Ooh, turtles. Turtles. They live so much longer. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, what's the be best piece of advice you've ever received? Mm. I worked for a woman who was like this critically acclaimed designer, and she told me, always buy your own jewelry. She's like, if you can afford to buy everything that you want as a woman, mm -hmm. you're always guaranteeing yourself a happy life. I like that. Mm -hmm. I really like that. What's the best piece of advice you give your team yourself? Mm. I guess don't sweat like trying to fit in, you'll never really fit in. Mm -hmm. Be really happy with surrounding yourself with people that um, help you be more curious and help you learn more and expand. Thank you. I appreciate that advice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what's a book that everyone should read? Oh, that's a really good question. 
Um, well, I think Frankenstein. Interesting. Mary Shelley is a genius, and I think she's been totally underrated. But Frankenstein, or the story of Prometheus, is the story that all people need to understand, especially if they're innovative. Mm -hmm. The relationship between yourself and what you create and how it affects the people around you in the world is something that we don't really have a relationship with. Mm -hmm. And it is the story of the problems that we're trying to solve and the innovation that we're making. And yeah. And the monsters that we create along the way. <laughs> you see, I tried to read that a couple of years ago, and I'm glad I didn't get through with it because I would not have gotten that message. <laughs> so now I can go back and yeah. try and appreciate that. It's the story of Prometheus. Yeah. yeah. Um, what would you like to be remembered for? Um, I always wanted to be like a female Nelson Mandela or Gandhi. And so I would like to have given my contribution to world peace. Mm -hmm. Literally, that's what my app is about. How do you define beauty? Hmm. I think beauty is kindness, it's generosity, and it's emotional depth. Mm -hmm. What's the best way for you to rest, decompress, get in touch with yourself? Surfing. Surfing. At 4 a.m. or at a normal hour? Earlier the better. Okay. Yeah, because sunrise is everything. Mm -hmm. And also the animals are out and I'm disturbed by them. What's your favorite place to view art? Ooh, that's a really good one. I would say at bazaars all over Africa. People, handmade stuff. It's people's life work, it's people's mm -hmm. stories, it's their culture. That's the best art you can ever get. Mm -hmm. Like, no offense to this yeah. wonderful place. Beautiful establishment. <laughs> that's yeah. your life. Yeah. Yeah. If your life were a song, what would the title be? Um, it would be uh, probably Amber. That's one of my favorite songs by 311. Yeah. The description of somebody's aura. Mm -hmm. Um, what's your favorite spirit animal? What's your spirit animal? My spirit animal is a leopard or a harpy hawk. Wow, you had that ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I have a tattoo of it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> give a thought to it. <laughs> what's the best gift you've ever received? Um, when my husband and I went on our second date, he gave me crystal lightsabers for my hair, little chopsticks. Mm -hmm. What's the best gift you've ever given? Um, for his 30th birthday, I gave him a penguin cake that I made with a cake maker mm -hmm. that was him if he looked like a penguin. <laughs> With a beard and everything. I'm so curious what <laughs> it was, looks like. It was really good. <laughs> What's your favorite board game? Carcassonne. Ooh, I don't know. What, do you know that, Joey? I don't know. It's a German board game of land mastery and trade. Hmm. It's very good. You can get very heated for the last few hours, and I'm the master of propaganda for that. <laughs> I can convince people to give me their responses. <laughs> <laughs> How about a favorite video game? Um, it would definitely be Mario Kart. Yeah, uh, good game. Yeah. Classic. Favorite favorite track? Favorite, like, what do you call it in English? Like, race track? Race track. track. Um, it would definitely be the Ghost Palace. Mm -hmm. You know, when they're like in that decrepit haunted house Whoa. and Kirby and his homies are running after them uh -huh. and they have to like jump the gates of hell. Mm -hmm. It's very good. I just like coconut mom. Oh, well, <laughs> never never never. Never. What's your favorite artist? Mm. That's a really good question. I would say it's Da Vinci. Ooh, okay. What's the read this word in the English language? So, English language. Weirdest word. Weirdest word. Onomatopoeia. Stairs or elevators? Stairs. They're better for you. <laughs> Dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Dark chocolate. It's better for you. <laughs> 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 it's dessert, you 
don't like. Uh, what is that weird jello mold that they put the stuff inside of it? Oh, I know what you're talking Do you know about. What I don't I mean know what she's talking I don't know what the name of it is. My but. husband's grand aunt likes to It's make not it. fruitcake. No, it's like jello yeah. with the stuff in it. I know what you're Ambrosia. talking about. Ambrosia. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's so crazy. No offense. It's supposed <laughs> to be the food of the gods. I know. <laughs> no, but this is not like, I don't know if this is the same Ambrosia. I'm believing it's like some fictitious word, um, version born out of Latin era. Uh-huh. Um, if you're stuck on a desert island, you can pick one food to eat forever without getting tired of it. What would you eat? I'm guessing it's virgin. No, it would be an avocado. Avocado. Okay. Because you can sweeten it, it can be salty, it can go with anything, catch a fish. Mm -hmm. It's good. Smart. Mm -hmm. What is a skill you're working on mastering? <sighs> I hate it, but I'm really working on mastering rendering in 3D. Mm. It's painful. I'm a good artist, mm -hmm. but rendering digitally is a pain in my butt. Yeah. Yeah. What's the best thing to happen to you today? Today? Today. I was let in back into my apartment <laughs> after, after having a whole like thing around not being able to get in. And also, you know, I think waking up every day and yeah. feeling good is wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So I'm missing the worst thing that happened to you today. Getting locked out. What's the best compliment you've ever received? I guess, I guess, I always enjoy when people feel uplifted there. So anytime a friend or even a stranger says that I uplifted their spirits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Favorite smell. Ooh, yes. Um, it would be Karsharal Noah. It's a floral scent. It kind of smells like the combination of Japanese um, cherry blossoms, light roses, and like the uh, saffron dusk. But it was discontinued. Oh no! <laughs> you should pitch it to Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> I should. <laughs> Please bring this back. If you made a documentary, what would it be about? I did have a documentary that got canceled before COVID, but it's about the color purple, like the pigment, and how it built Cleopatra's empire. Wow. Wait, tell us more. <laughs> Save it for later. <laughs> What's the last piece of content you consumed that made you cry? The last piece of content that I consumed that made me cry? Hmm. The movie, The Master. It's on Amazon. It's about this woman who, uh, this young woman who goes to a university and goes through culture shock from going from the South. Like, she, I guess she was living in Texas growing up and then came to the Northeast and the culture shock of like absorbing the history of the Northeast. Yeah. And it's very poignant. That's how I felt when I came here. Oh, yeah. You've mentioned your husband a couple of times. How do you know you're in love? How do I know I'm in love? It's more like a haunting. <laughs> it's just that, you know, it's somebody that you care about and, you know, that you know they're always going to be there. They support you. Whenever you have something that you are curious about or you're excited about, it's the first person you think about. And for me, it's that we share a lot of adventures. If you could switch lives with someone for a day, what would it be? Um, that's a good question. Oh, I guess it would be the Matahari. She's a, a Middle Eastern spy from the 1920s, and I was just reading her biography, and I just thought, and she, her day job was being like a dancer, but she was a spy. Yeah, it's very good. What, what? 
Why should you not think that you're a spy? And you're just saying that. <laughs> I'm like, what would I get from spying on you guys? <laughs> <laughs> give all the secrets. <laughs> but I do love how women can be seen and unseen. Like yeah, how much power we have in that. Yeah, I agree. Um, what are you most excited about in this time in your life? I think, I think it's over. That I've had enough experience behind me to do whatever I want, and I'm young enough yeah. also to do whatever I want, yeah. and it's kind of nice to have all the tools in your toolkit to accomplish yeah. whatever you want, and you just kind of got to decide it, Yeah. which I come from um, a background where... You know, my parents didn't have a lot of privilege, and I had to help my parents, like, acclimate to being in the U.S. and then going back home and going through wars and those complications of coming from a developing nation. And so being at this place right now is just wonderful. It's my home. What is your go-to for having a good laugh? That's a really good question. Watch Too Thin Birdie. It's uh, a show with Tiffany Haddish and Ali Wong, and they're two birds living in a bird life, and they have a lot of social commentary and the funniest way to talk about it, about what it is to be a woman. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're studying at RISD now. Mm -hmm. Where did you study before? Um, Berkeley. Berkeley. Did you yes. have a favorite club or something there? Um, like a, a social like, club? Like a school, like campus club. Um, no, I didn't really participate that much on campus. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I'm an immigrant and I've always had a lot of responsibilities. So a lot of my socializing, a lot of my energy for a long time went to taking care of my family. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's really honorable. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Do you have an affirmation for today? Mm -hmm. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> What's one thing you still have from your childhood? Um, well, I guess I've had to travel and move a lot. So the things I keep most with me are like songs and songs that my grandmother used to sing to me and I sing them whenever I feel a little out of sorts or I'm trying to figure something out. That's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You know, the next question is actually what's your favorite lyrics of all time? Oh, <laughs> definitely her lyrics and then if I were to say songs that have influenced me infinitely would definitely be Pink Floyd. I like, yeah, I love their commentary, social commentary on Americana and, and life in the industry. What's one thing you've always wanted to do but been too scared of? And I'm not sure if that even exists in your book, but... Yeah, no, I haven't. <laughs> never not done anything because I'm scared. Usually fear is a good driver for me to do something. Yeah. Do you have a kryptonite? <laughs> something that... Uh, yeah, I care too much. Okay. Um, what's one thing you've learned the hard way? I care too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the easier one. What's your first celebrity crush? Um, hmm. That's a good one. It would definitely be Justin Timberlake. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions about your venture, XTP? Sure. So, what inspired you to start this venture? Um, seeing what it was like being black in America at a time where America had shifted away from embracing, embracing diversity and then go into the stark contrast of um, fear mongering and trying to destroy itself. Um, I think that it just completely shifted what I understood to be um, American progress and it completely altered my understanding of what people perceive the value of being American and being a citizen is. And why is the solution important? Um, I think at the very least, 
fighting for our democracy represents the fight for democracy worldwide. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're at a very interesting point in time where after generations before us fought for democracy and us growing this really beautiful life um, through methodologies of democracy, seeing that being slowly whittled away and people not understanding what the alternate looks like um, that really bothers me because I come from a country that doesn't have democracy. It's killed many people, including people in my family. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just personally don't want to be a part of letting those opportunities and that progress go. How would you say that v helped helped you in developing your mentoring? Um, it just gave me space and um, as a woman of color, having space is not always a guarantee, um, you know, especially in prestigious institutions, you're always, your space is always being whittled away and your sense of self, your voice um, and your command over your own self and your contribution to the world um, is always being altered in somebody else's vision. And so BLAP gave me the space to um, spend time on my own vision and getting tools and support systems for that. And I'm really looking forward to harnessing the energy that you guys have put into us and to create an opportunity for accessibility and difference for everybody else. Wonderful. Did anything surprising happen in these last couple of weeks? I had a really weird conversation with my mentor who I met for the first time the, yesterday or the day before, no, on Friday. Um, yeah, he said, all money is dirty, which made me really kind of sad as a person yeah. that works in the civic space and as an activist. Mm -hmm. And it really made me feel like um, he's been through a lot. Yeah. And that the art of making beautiful, products for the public is a undervalued um, process and an undervalued position. And so it made me really want to pay special attention to who I um, allow into the organization and in my space yeah. so that hopefully I can um, not just prove them wrong, but um, be a part of creating spaces that aren't bogged down by um, bureaucracy and dirty money. Yeah. Yeah. How is it being a solo founder? Well, um, I started my product with um, a co-founder mm -hmm. and because of unrealized um, complications of his institutional affiliations, um, I had to, like we had to reorganize the institution uh, sorry, reorganize our product. And so I don't feel like um, a solo founder because my support systems are still there. Yeah. But I am definitely looking forward to evening out the emotional and strategic burden by adding yeah. some new found, uh, co founders. Yeah, burnout yeah. is definitely a very common trend amongst a lot of the other vendors. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, what's a tip you would give to someone looking to start a venture? Um, I would definitely say that I didn't think I needed to do because I've worked in startups and um, had a lot of work experience, but I definitely would say that just having support and different people to bounce ideas off of and to clarify is so useful. So I definitely encourage people to go through an incubator. Yeah. Um, just for your personal growth. It might not even make a huge difference in the product outcomes, but your relationship with your product and the time you spend cultivating that, um, especially for the type of product that I'm doing, is meaningful. Okay. And last question, since we are in a place of knowledge, what is the most interesting fact you can come up with for us today? That the Vatican did not acknowledge that the world was round until 1982. 1982? Wow. Mm -hmm. Weren't women like no longer properties of their husbands in like 1988? 
Like, it is just big. And you're just like, man, we haven't come that far, but we've come a long way. Yeah, because yeah, that wasn't that long ago. Yeah, that's not... no. yeah, and so, yeah, it just puts a lot of things in perspective because, you know, a lot of the conversations about what the world is and isn't and what our rights are and aren't and who we can be and who we can't be yeah. have been happening for so long, but the actual institutionalization of those things yeah. are so recent. And so even when you get frustrated, like, why the hell am I still dealing with this stuff like racism or bigotry or, you know, sexism? And then you're like, wait, that didn't like not stop being a thing until yeah. very recently. And so it gives you a little more perspective. Thank you for giving us perspective today. Yeah. And thank you for your time. Thank you guys. This has been fun.